Durango, we headed home pretty much the same way we came through southern Utah and northern Arizona. First, we overnighted in Cayenta. The next morning, we headed up to Page, Arizona to take in the Gun Canyon Dam, then continued on to Kanab, where we spent the second night. And then we drove on into Zion National Park. In Bluff, Utah, we found this model AA Ford truck at the Twin Rocks Trading Post. These are the Twin Rocks here. It's definitely a Ford AA truck, but it's been given the indignity of someone putting a Chevy radiator shell on it. How embarrassing. Driving across northern Arizona, there was lots of evidence of the monsoon rain that had happened a few days earlier. Lots of mud and dirt all over the highway. Lots of signs of flash flooding in the gullies and low spots. I'm sure glad our timing worked out the way it did. It would have been pretty bad if we had been driving through here when all this was happening. Carl Hayden Visitor Center is perched right on the canyon's edge, giving you a bird's eye view of the dam and of the bridge. Glen Canyon Dam is 710 feet tall and backs up the Colorado River, forming Lake Powell for a distance of 186 miles. It has over 25 million acre feet of water when full. Apparently, dinosaurs thought this was a great place to live as well. If you attended the Model A Ford Club of America's national meet in Kanab, Utah in October of 19, then you know what a beautiful place this is. It's centrally located around so many national parks. We stayed at the Red Canyon cabins during the national meet and decided to do it again. It's very convenient having your car parked right outside your hotel room door. The next morning, we got up very early to make it to Zion National Park, not only to beat the crowds, but we needed to make it all the way to Ely, Nevada by the end of the day.
order to get from one side of the park to the other, you have to go through the Mount Carmel Tunnel. This tunnel was completed in July of 1930 when vehicles were not as big as they are today. If you have a vehicle that's more than 11 feet, four inches tall or more than seven and a half feet wide, you have to get a permit so that they can control the traffic is the only way you're going to make it through this tunnel is if you drive right down the middle of the road. It does have holes drilled out to the cliff face that let in some natural light. The tunnel's 1.1 miles long and was the longest tunnel of its type at the time that it was completed. out the west side of the park we came upon this boulder in the middle of the highway. I'd bet money there's a coyote underneath it. We were forced onto Interstate 15 for about 35 miles. It's got an 80 mile an hour speed limit. I couldn't wait to get off of it. I breathed a sigh of relief when we finally made it to US 50, the loneliest road in America. We pretty much had it all to ourselves except for the Mormon crickets. If you've watched our Loneliest Road video, then you know that Nevada is completely infested with Mormon crickets. It's so bad in eastern Nevada, the highway is completely brown. And in some places, it's become a serious road hazard as the road is as slick as ice with the number of dead Mormon crickets on the road. The highway department has gone so far as to put out warning signs to get people to slow down as they're very dangerous on the curves, the roads are so slick with dead crickets. Well, after owning Model A's for 40 years, it finally happened. I got a speeding ticket. He got me doing 85 and a 70. No, actually, he was just checking on us as we had pulled over to take a picture of the cricket sign. <laughs> 